going to do is a demonstration of a quick look that you can do for your Zoom meetings, Zoom parties. It's just a quick face you can do for 10, 15 minutes. So what you want to be mindful of is your skin type. So I have oily skin. So this moisturizer I'm using is an oil-free moisturizer. And what that's going to do is moisturize my skin without adding any extra oils. So I don't want to be, because I'm oily, I don't want to be too shiny on camera. So I'm going to go in with my oil-free moisturizer. And if you have like under eye circles, you want to be mindful to really get the moisturizer in them. So that area looks nice and hydrated. Because if that area looks dry, you could sometimes age your skin and just make you look tired. So it's good to get some moisturizer in. While that's on, I'm just going to put on some lip balm just to hydrate my lips, even though this wasn't on the um, list of ingredients you have to bring. Okay. And then the another step would be, I know most people's moisturizer already comes with SPF, but I like to use an extra one. So this is only if, for example, you are going to be sitting in front of um, an open window, which I am now. So I have artificial lighting, but I also have an open window. And just in case you're wondering why you need sunscreen, even though you're not outside, is because you should use a sunscreen that protects you from UVA and UVB rays. So UVB, B for burns, and UVA, A for aging. And the UVA rays are actually the ones that have access to you even when you're not in direct sunlight or when you're not in directly under the sun. So through the windows now, um, UVA rays are having access to my skin. So you wanna put on SPF if you are going to be under the sun. So I'm just putting on, putting a bit on my hand. And something as common is most people don't know how much sunscreen to pop on. I'm able to eyeball it, but typically you should put like three finger long. So you should actually spread the sunscreen on your three fingers. And that's how you know how much you need. But I'm doing it for quite some time. So I know how much to, it looks a lot. Yeah, it looks a lot. Yeah, so you wanna make sure you're using one that is not, um, as long as you give you a wide cast. So you rub it in. And the one I'm using is by a Korean brand, brand. I think it's about maybe 12, 15 pounds. It's called Cosarex, the Korean brand, and it's the Aloe Soothing Sun Cream. So I'm just going to rub that in. How much is that in the factor? What's that one? Um, the one you have? It costs about maybe 12 pounds. No, I mean about 25 or 50, do you see what I mean? Oh, SPF 50. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 50, SPF okay, 50. Good. Yes. Okay. So you need to have, a, you should use a minimum of SPF 30. Okay. So you can see how it's rubbed into my skin. It leaves a nice um, glow, but now I'm looking even more shiny, which is why powder is very, very important. So I have all of that on now. Okay, so the next step would be to go into your makeup. So typically, depending on what your skin is like, you could go directly with your powder. And that's why I said concealer is optional, but I'm just going to demonstrate concealer just in case you did need concealer. So if you have any discoloration on your skin that you're conscious about, or maybe like around your, under, your eye area is a bit darker, you can just take a concealer. So I'm going to be using um, MAC Studio Finish Concealer. You can use any concealer of your choice. Um, preferably something that is the same color as your skin or just a tiny bit 
lighter than his skin. Tiny, 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 tiny bits. So preferably just use your fingers so it's nice and quick to apply. Is it like a cream or is it like a powder? So, sorry? The concealer, is it a cream or is it a powder? Yes, the concealer is a cream consistency. Okay. So I'm just taking a tiny, tiny bit. And this is optional, as I said. You just put it wherever you need to cover. So I don't really have anything I need to cover, but just for um, demonstration purposes, I'm just showing you. I'm using my finger to go on tiny bit of discolorations I have around my mouth. Just tap it in until it's nice and blended into your skin. So can you use foundation as concealer? Yes, you can. But typically the reason Concealer is, is just a quicker method and easier to use in the case where you do have discoloration because it's thicker. So it will cover whatever it is you need to cover much faster and much easier than a foundation would, but you could always use a foundation if the foundation you have is full coverage. And it's your fingers that you use to Ideally, yes. So it's just so it's just quick and you don't need any tools. Just using your finger to tap that in to the area that you need to just give a little bit of brightness. So I'm just doing my eye area. Just gentle taps. I'm timing you. Five minutes have gone. <laughs> so, Kay, did you think some people overdo it when it comes to makeup? Definitely. Yep. And do you think there's some of the things that people makeup um, we do with makeup we don't really need to do? I'm just asking. It's, it's no right or wrong answer. Um. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely some steps that we could live without. I mean, especially going on, um, coming on Zoom, for example, um, you, don't, you don't need to have your makeup on for a long time. So there's not, you don't need to really go really hard. So once I'm done putting my concealer on, I'm gonna go on with my powder, taking my brush, I'm going into my powder. And the best way to get your a good amount of coverage in powder, you really want to go in with the brush, tap off any excess. You see, I have my powder on. The brush. I want to, what you want to do is actually tap on the powder as opposed to rubbing on the powder. So I'm just going to show you. So, two good powders I would recommend, anyone is fine. But two good powders I recommend are um, there's the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish. So that has like a very radiant natural finish. And then there's the MAC um, Studio Fix Powder, which is kind is very full coverage and it's matte. So MAC Mineralized Skin Finish or MAC Studio Fix Powder. Did you say Studio Fix? Yes. MAC Studio Fix. So I'm just tapping the powder onto my skin. You wanna go over all areas of your skin, through around your eyes. You can see I'm not rubbing, typically how we know to apply powder is just, I'm actually doing a tapping, pressing motion. Not too much pressure, just be gentle. 
What if I don't have a makeup brush? So you could use a puff, which powders mostly come with. Mm. Okay, okay. You can go down your neck. So you want to really make sure you have the right shade of powder so you don't look too strange. Did say, sorry, did you say you could, I have a mineralized skin finish. Could I use that? Yes, and, you do. Okay. Yes, you can use that. Okay, because I actually just make sure the other one that I have. I okay. prefer it to the Studio Fix Plus. Yeah, because it's a nice, nice radiant oh, finish. Okay. Yeah, so just make sure the most important areas to cover around your eyes. The eyes really play a role in waking up the face. And you want to go onto your nose because we tend to get really shiny in that area. So you could even keep your powder handy okay. for if you notice that you're getting oily. Okay, so I have my powder on and 80% of the job is done, depending on how you're feeling that day. The next steps are optional. I'm, um, I'm surprised that you talk about lighting your eyes and your eyes. Yeah, I'm about to. Started. I thought it would be something you do before you put the powder. So are you saying it's no. best to put the powder first? After, after, yes. Cause you know, you want to put your concealer and then you want to powder all over. If you're not using concealer, you want to powder all of that area on your skin. What you want is you want your face to be one nice color. So if you do your eyeliner, you might still have like, you know, some discoloration, maybe your eye, the skin on top of your eyes is a bit darker, or the skin under your eyes is a bit darker. And what will happen is when you've done your eyeliner and then you're now doing your powder, you would be more, you being kind of kept, like being a bit too careful around that area might not be able to get into all the crevices of your face so it's best to do it actually after so your next step would be eyeliner and then mascara which are both optional because at this point once you've done your skin you can really just put on a lipstick and you're good to go And then eyeliner, you can choose to do top and bottom or either one. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to do both. So I'm just using my um, pencil eyeliner. I have my top eyeliner on. I can choose to leave this, or you could you could just use leave it this way. You could use the eyeliner for your bottom as well, which I'm going to do. Again, just for demonstration purposes. Oh. My personal preference is actually just um mascara. As opposed to eyeliners. Really? Yeah, I'll just use only mascara. I wouldn't do highlighter. I like your earrings. Very nice. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just gonna put on some mascara. And what mascara is going to do? Just to coat your lashes. Give them a little bit of volume and some length too.
there's another reason why it's important to do your base first, which is your powder and concealer first. Because if you're doing all of that once you've done your eyeliner and mascara, it's a bit risky. Okay. Sorry, what did, next... what did you just do there? What did you do there? Okay. Um, yeah. you... Sorry? Okay, carry on mine. You know, you just, what did you put? You put a powder under there. Does that fix No, the... I just used my powder to just like wipe underneath okay. my eyes. Yeah, just a brush. Okay. Okay, and then the next step, optional. Again, I didn't add that because I don't think it's something you need to really worry about unless, again, up to personal preference. You don't have to do your eyebrows. You could just, just take a brush and brush them into shape, mostly upwards, into shape. It, it, and you're good. Color on the uh, on the brush. Is it a an, an, uh, mascara brush? No, it's a clear. It's a clear brush. I see. Okay. This is disposable. Okay. And then, so the next step is going to be your <gasps> lipstick. So using your favorite lipstick. My favorite lipstick of color is red. I'm just gonna put on Anything about lining lips? Am I missing something? No, What's you don't have to take on lining lips. You don't okay. have to. Okay. So it's up to personal preference again. Okay. But if you want to, if that's your style, if you love to line your lips. You have enough time to line your lips, then by all, all means, line your lips. Is matte lipstick preferable or the glossy one? So because of the shine, depending on the light you have in front of you, you could decide. So I'm a glossy girl and I would tend to go towards a, um, a lip gloss, but if I'm in a professional setting and I know I'm going to have a lot of light on me, I would go with matte. And we're done. And we're done. Oh, wow. Yes. That was actually a short one. Oh, okay. Any questions? Questions? Let's fire how it questions. I was going to ask about um, lining the top of your eye okay because the way my eyelids are i'm not too sure that i can see the top of my eye to line it okay okay so if you're not lining the top does it follow that you don't line the bottom or no you can you can do you can do either so you can do both you can do only the top you can do only the bottom so there are days i do only the top the days i do only the bottom the days i do both the days i do none so my personal preference, like I said, is no eyeliner. I just use mascara. Okay. Mm. So that's like that quick one when you want to run out of the door. Mascara lipstick. Yes. Or mascara yeah. lipstick. So I just do my moisturizer, sunscreen, a little bit of any cover up I need to do with concealer powder, mascara, lipstick, and I'm out. 
So just brush your eyebrows. What if you don't have eyebrows? Exactly. If you don't, <laughs> or your That's eyebrows exactly. are wonky. <laughs> So if you don't have eyebrows, I'm going to talk about um, more of the semi-permanent solution before we go into how to draw your eyebrows. Hmm. So you don't have eyebrows, you can, can consider getting an eyebrow tint, so which is something that you have. You get a professional to do your shape and the um, preferred color, not black, Please. dark brown. Dark brown. So, yeah, dark brown. So if you get a professional eyebrow tint, you could also get micro blading or micro shading. And this lasts about two so tint three years. So those are uh, is it those are options if you feel you don't you don't have enough eyebrows. So those are options that just allow you to wake up and go. I believe the eyebrow tint lasts about two to three weeks, and the shading or um, micro blading or micro um, shading lasts about two years before you need to do any like top ups. So, but if you do want to draw your eyebrows, you just want to, again, take your brush and brush your eyebrows upwards into place. And then take your eyebrow pencil and create a sh the shape that you like. So for me, because I already have hairs, there's not really much I'm going to do. I will just... Um, Probably just outline the ends to create a more defined shape. So I'm gonna move a little bit closer so you can see. And I'm just taking the pencil. So I like to use one of these like roll-up style pencils. You can use either, if you don't have something like this, you can also use your regular eyebrow pencil. But what you want to make sure you do is make sure your eyebrow pencil is not an oily pencil and also make sure your eyebrow pencil is very very sharp which is why i use this because i don't have to sharpen it in between uses so use an eyebrow pencil that is very sharp that would give you the neatest and also most natural looking realistic yeah realistic not necessarily natural but realistic looking eyebrows i'm just going to go in and create so what i like to do is i like to not put too much pressure so it's not too dark and what i'm doing now is just outlining my shape and i'm being very light-handed mm. and you can go back with your eyebrow brush, just to brush through. You can do a little bit in the front, just very, so you have to be very, very light-handed so it looks nice and natural. So if you can see the difference between the two eyebrows is that this just looks more defined. It has a nice defined shape. It looks nice and natural. So I'm gonna do the same thing for this side. Again, you just brush it into shape, take your eyebrow pencil, very light strokes you want to create, draw whatever shape that you like or feel most comfortable with. Mm. For a very dark complexion person, would I use black or black brown or black brown? Black brown. Black brown. Are you saying we should never ever use black? Like never. No, ever. ma. Never ever ever. Never ever. Like ever ever. Ever ever. Never. Okay. Yeah. What if you want to grow your brows? If you've overplucked your brows. Nice work, by the way. If you've overplucked your brows and you're trying to grow them back, is there any hope? Mm -hmm. mm, well, it depends. <laughs> <That's> no. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on how long the overplucking has been going on. So that's how much damage there is to your hair follicles. Right. But typically, for someone who has been, you know, plucking to the point it's being termed over plucking. 
you'd probably have to wait like 10 to 12 months before you see any growth. 10 to 12 months. So I have like a, um, some people say castor oil, but I don't believe in it or use it because um, it's a comedogenic oil. So what that means, a very heavy oil and it's likely to block your pores. So you end up now having acne around your eyebrows. Right. Yeah, which I'd rather not. But I'm sure if you do some research, there should maybe be some of these like eyebrow serums or eyebrow growth serums or eyebrow growth gels that might be on the market that might actually work. Okay. Thank you. So what would be the best way for um, shaping or trimming your eyebrows or removing excess hairs? At home? I, yes, at home. I, I use um, these um, blade, the nail, the hair shaping blade. Okay. And I just use, you know, round a bit. I can't do, yes. I can't do threading. It's just too painful. You know, I can't do anything painful you know I can't, I can't even put eyeliner without you know without holding my eye and you know doing it you know I can't just do it the way you did it you know so I don't then know the, the blade is your best bet because it's not painful it's easy it's safe and um it grows back really quickly so you, with that you're not actually doing any damage to your follicles so that's the that's your your best bet using those like the braids with the blades with the stick so you can kind of but what you want to do is sometimes what helps actually is to actually draw on your shape of brows mm -hmm. and then just use the blade to take off whatever hair is outside that shape but sometimes what happens is you end up taking a lot more hair off mm -hmm. when you yeah. just trim your eyebrows on your own without having any makeup on and then you're having to fill in. So what you can do to cheat sometimes, just draw already what you usually draw on when you do your makeup and then whatever hair is outside of what you've drawn, then you can take that off with the blade or tweezers, whatever option you choose. All right. Thank you, that's a great tip. <laughs> I, I've had that problem in the past. The one eyebrow is looking <laughs> and you're now yes, trying. Yes, so yeah, so it helps you. Mm. Yes. Like yes. yes, yes, like they know each other at least. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you very much, um, Katie. Any, any more questions? You just transformed within minutes. Sorry? Then you just transformed within minutes. So any more questions, any recommended um, products, um, you know, any recommended uh, products? Um, I would say, what I would say is, I think skincare more than makeup, if your skin is great you and you don't have time, you can get away with doing less. So a lot of times I think we've been taught to focus more on makeup than skincare. So one of the big, big tips I would give is sunscreen. Very, 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 very important and can be life-changing when you use it consistently. Um, yeah, so folk, try to focus more on skincare so you have um, less to do and you can always do research, you can always reach out to me to if you need any like, you know, product recommendations, any problems that you might be having with your skin. Um, that's basically it. And when you're doing makeup, um, less is more. With the amount of products you do, you use with the direction you're going with the makeup as well, less is more. Okay. And um, what do you think about um, Korean skincare products? Love. Okay, if you want me, I can go and bring like my, my truckload <laughs> of stuff. It was just a hype. I thought it was just a hype. No, oh, so no, 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 no. I use their products as well, and it's really, really helped my skin. So, yeah. Yeah. Please, can you recommend some Korean products for me? Go and bring for your. Men. For For me, she said. 
Okay, 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 okay. Let me go and bring all my stuff. I'll okay. be right back. I only have, I don't know, I, my all my makeup can fit in one small purse. So let's see. All your makeup fits in one small purse. Yeah. <laughs> the powder, the foundation, which I only wear when I'm like going for a party or something. So that's like maybe four times a year. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, eyeliner. Eyeshadow. No, oh, even the eyeshadow. Again, if I'm going to. Well, I like this one, just concealer, powder. I have a concealer, but I only use it for my brows because I've taken too much air out. So that when I draw it on, I can use it to like clean it up, if that makes sense. Okay. But then again, most times I start off with a good intention of actually going through with it, but. I don't do yeah, it. You have good skin, so you can get away with them. Um... Well, I see all these babes, and you've got such perfect makeup. And I'm thinking, how? Like everyday, everyday makeup. Well, yeah, yeah. I don't even know how they get, how they do it. Yeah. And it's so perfect for me to get my own perfect like that. I will be there for hours. Like, to be honest, I'm just not patient enough. It's interesting because you even. Oh, you look nice. What? Well, <laughs> Auntie Emma. Like I'm the only person that is not doing makeup on this call. Let me see. Oh, see, oh, it's true. You're right. Oh, God, she's back. <laughs> hey, you look gorgeous. Let's see. Let's see. What have we got? Going on? And my bees, I'm sorry, Katie. Katie, I mix her up with DK. Katie, oh, yeah, show us. Okay. And then so, like the call. <laughs> Yeah, the wait. Korean skincare routine is actually a 10 step routine, but um, you don't have to do all 10 steps. I certainly do not do all 10 steps every day. Um, okay, so the first thing is cleansing. And what um, Koreans and Asians in generally, and Asians in general do something called a double cleanse. And this has literally changed my life. So what a double cleanse is, is that you use... Katie actually used to have really sensitive skin, so breakouts all the time and that kind of thing. You know, she battled yes. it for years, for a couple of years, you just battled it and... Yes, yes she yes, did. Yes. And here you are. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, yeah, so what a double cleanse method is that you cleanse your face twice. First with an oil or a, it's oil or like a balm. You know how like coconut oil turns into a balm, but then when you um, rub it together, it turns into an oil. So that kind of consistency. So use an oil or like a balm textured cleanser first. You rinse that off and then you use your gel or cream cleanser, which is basically like your soap cleanser. Now, the science behind that is that... um that like um, Pond's cold cream? This is like, like that cold cream that our parents used to use to cleanse their faces in the overnight. Because it's really oily. Hmm. No, I don't, I don't think so. I'm not sure, actually. I'm not familiar with that product, but I've heard about it before. Okay. So the science behind using the oil or balm-based cleanser first is... A lot of times what we do is just like this, you would just, a lot of people just go on and wash their face. Like, oh, I'm washing my face, so I'm taking my makeup off. Or some people are nice enough to their skin to use a makeup wipe. And those two methods of cleaning your skin or taking your makeup off are simply not um, deep cleansing enough yet gentle. So for someone who, for like me, who are like I'm an extreme case where I have, I have oily skin and I have um, pores, what you want to do is, or even, even without makeup, so I use this every day. I use the cleansing method, the double cleansing method every day, even when I don't have makeup on. So what you want to do is you want to take your oil, just pump into your hands. I can actually, I'll do it to show you how, because oil breaks down makeup, oil breaks down sunscreen, oil is going to bind with the oil on your skin oil is going to um yes bind with the oil on your skin and basically break down any dirt on your skin so you put that 
either the balm, the oil onto your skin and just massage it. It's going to break off all your makeup, waterproof makeup, whatever. And then when you rinse with water, so you want to make sure your hands are dry and your face is dry because once water touches it, that oil is going to emulsify. And what that means is going to rinse off, turn it into a milky substance. So basically what this is, is it's a very deep cleanse, but it's very gentle because they're basically using oil to clean your face. So mm -hmm. it's like having um, any like waterproof makeup. If you just use even coconut oil, but please don't use coconut oil on your skin. If you just use the cleansing oil, it's going to break that down, literally dissolve it. So I use it because with sunscreen, with makeup on or with dirt and oil throughout the day, sometimes you, when you're washing your face, you end up being quite harsh you're either washing your face twice which is way too much or you're washing your face with like hot water or you know you're vigorously using a wipe and all of that is quite strenuous to your skin so and especially for for i thought it was like a myth until i was doing it consistently i noticed that your skin really just wants to be babied and so you want to find the most gentle way to get a really deep clean so i use an oil cleanser first so some people use like the other ones they're called like bombs which i said is like a con the same consistency when you melt it the one i use is almost empty it's by a japanese brand it's called the dhc deep cleansing oil and apparently one of these sells every 27 seconds in the world like it's basically like life-saving Yes, yeah, like, and it's, it's uh, yeah, uh, and it's everybody like goes crazy about it. So yes, it's it's really amazing. It helps with waterproof makeup. Literally, like if I don't use this <laughs> for like two days, I can literally feel like my skin isn't doesn't feel light, just feels heavy, even if I'm taking off. So I, I've learned that using wipes or double cleansing my face wasn't really good at all, especially if you cleanse to the point where you start feeling like your face is tight and clean. No. So you want to use a cleansing balm or a cleansing oil first. So this is called the DHC deep cleansing oil. So I use this, like I said, just pump one or two pumps into my face, dry hands, dry face, because when water touches it, it starts to break down. So you want to make sure it's your hands and face are dry while you're breaking down the makeup. So you rinse that off. And then your next step is to cleanse. So I'm currently using this, the Korean brand as well. Unfortunately, the brand isn't officially in the UK yet, but I think there's some like third party um, resellers if you just search the name. So it's by a brand called, by a brand called Crave Beauty. And I just and checked, I think it's also good for dry skin as well. Yes, everything I'm telling you is good for all skin types. All skin types, okay. Yeah. So definitely an oil is amazing for cleansing dry skin. And this particular cleanser, as it says, is called the Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser. So even though I'm oily, I absolutely love this. And it's great. It's great for all skin types. I'm just going to tell you what it says at the back. It says it's an antioxidant cleanser that doesn't mess up your skin. So it's created with a K. So it's an antioxidant cleanser that doesn't mess up your skin barrier. It lifts everything. So while you're cleansing, it lifts everything your skin doesn't want while leaving what your skin needs. And that is, it's, it's amazing because I've been using this uh, maybe for about like eight, nine months now. And like I said, it's a hydrating cleanser. And I, I it's, it's almost empty. And I started using another Korean brand, which is, supposedly gentle. While it is gentle, I can feel a great difference between the two. And my preference is this. I'm not really going to tell you guys about this. But my preference is this. So this is a Korean brand, like I said. And it's a hydrating cleanser. So what it does is that it cleans your face. Like it said, leaving what your skin needs. So it's going to take off all the dirt, but it's going to leave. So there are some natural oils natural elements of your skin that some of those other things we use to wash our face like your neutrogena and all those things are quite harsh so this doesn't um, strip your skin of any of those things so it contains matcha hemp seeds oats almonds and other vitamins 
And the key with two things for cleansing is that you want to cleanse for at least 60 seconds. So that is whenever you're cleansing your skin, whatever it is you are um, applying onto your skin, whether it's your cleansing oil or your cleansing gel, which is your soap, you want to make sure you're actually um, in the cleansing motion. That is massaging the product into your skin for at least 60 seconds. And I know what used to, once you just see foam, you just rinse it off. But no, you want to really massage. You want to also get into like sections of your skin where sometimes dry skin builds up and all of that. So these are the two um, cleansing products that I use. So this is the double cleansing. So cleansing oil and your gel or cream cleanser, which is soap. So is that every morning or every evening? So um, every evening. So in the morning, I don't use, I don't bother with the cleansing because I don't have any makeup or dress on. I just have my skincare from the night before. So I either just rinse with water first and then go in with my cleanser. Or if I feel I, I want to give myself a little bit of a deep clean in the morning, I'll use a micellar water first and then I'll use the matcha hem um, cleanser. So the next step is to now go on to your leave-on products. So those are the products that you're actually leaving onto your skin. And um, one major tip that has really helped me, and this is great again for all skin types because I'm even oily. And whatever your skin type, skin type, you really want to focus on keeping your skin hydrated. And what that is, is not oil. So what that is, is water-based moisture. You want to focus on having your skin hydrated. So one thing I've noticed is when you cleanse your face, sometimes you feel you want to really wash it until it's feeling tight and squeaky clean. And then, you know, when you dry it with a towel or when you leave it to air dry, your face just gets this really tight feeling. And what happens is that sets the tone for your skin, of your skin for the rest of the day. And what you want to do is actually have more of a hydrated tone of your skin for the rest of the day. So what I do is when I'm out of the shower, I wash my face, I do not dry my face and I do not let my face dry either. So while my face is still damp, not wet, I now go on to leave my, to put on my leave on um, skincare products. So the first thing you usually start with is a toner. And in a more Western skincare, th this is changing now because, um, in the world generally, people are becoming more woke, more conscious, people are being called out for, okay, you know, this ingredient is good, this is bad. We have the influencer culture where people are talking about, okay, everybody use this skin products instead of maybe a brand like Clinique where everybody's used to. So those brands are paying more attention to consumers, paying more attention to influencer culture, which is, you know, letting people know from an educated perspective, what works and what doesn't work. So in Korean culture, we don't have um, toners that are like back in the day, Neutrogena, Clean and Clear. What else was there? Also it's like estrogen alcohol type toners, which is like literally like, oh, you're, you know, you are cleaning your face again, or you are almost like even giving a burning sensation. So more on the Korean side. And like I said, that's moving on to the Western products now. Your toner is something that is, is liquidy or like a milky texture and again it just helps to hydrate the skin and depending on which product you use which toner you use it will have different benefits so it might be an, an exfoliating toner so that's a toner that is hydrating but it's helping to lift dead skin cells it might have any specific ingredients that you are in need of at that particular time to treat any of your skin concerns so the one that i use is very, very Korean. It's called the Rice Toner from, it's a brand called I'm From. That's the name of the brand, I'm From. So it's I'm From Rice Toner. And it's not rice water, it's just rice toner. And it contains 77.78 rice extract. I wish I brought the box, I have the box, it's quite interesting. On every box, they actually write the exact village with the latitude and everything of where the rice extracts from your rice toner is gotten. And what this is, is it is super, super, super hydrating. And it's also a brightening toner. And I noticed the difference 
literally the first time I used it from the first time I had like um so sometimes my weekends get very busy and I cheat. I'm not gonna do it again, but I've done it before where I cheated. I didn't really wash my face, I just used my cellar water, ran out to the next client, and I paid for it. Like I had um two pimples that were taking at this point it was like the third week, and they were still like swollen and they still had color to them. So I had like two spots on my face. And from the first time I ever used it, the next morning I could see the swelling coming down. I can I could see um the color changing as well. So this is a rice toner. You wanna to always look up like how the brand actually says you should use the product. So at this time you can't see per se, but with this um, particular product, it, um, it separates. So you want to really shake it before you use it. And again, I don't like to waste products and I also like to be very, very gentle on my skin. So with my toner, I don't use a cotton pad because I'm just like, ah, cotton pad is going to absorb my products dollar is expensive so i just use my hands and a lot of the um skincare people who have influenced my choices as well they use their hands so you, i just point like almost just like maybe a teaspoon and a half into my palms and i would press together and i just press into my skin again this is while my skin is damp I, so i don't dry my face while my skin is damp just pour like a teaspoon and a half into my hands press together and then you just gently press that into your face and your neck. So that's your toner. And after that, um, you wanna go into your, so Koreans have a specific product they call essences. So essences are again, more of a hydrating step. And one of the most popular um, essences in the world right now is this. Um, so everything else I'm gonna show you is from this brand actually. Is called COS RX. So COS standing for cosmetics and RX being prescription. So this is like a really, really big and successful um, Korean brand. Thankfully, you can get it in the UK. So this particular product is called the Advanced Snail 96 Mousin Power Essence. And what it does is <laughs> it contains like 6% snail secretion Ew. and it helps to... <laughs> <laughs> it helps the skin to lose to lose less moisture while keeping the skin smooth and healthy. So what that does is that from your toner and everything else you've put before you put this, it helps your skin to retain that moisture that moisture to keep your skin smooth and healthy. It, it's a, it's it's a really amazing product and it's one of those things that is always sold out. Everybody uses it and all the reviews from all the right from Western to Korean, everybody on what, every level of dermatology, they swear by this product. So this is that. So after your um, essence, you know, oh, actually no, before your essence rather, sorry. You want to use, after toner, you want to use your, so I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to send you guys a, um, a, a sheet that has like the list of the steps, just so you don't get too confused because a lot of information. Um, yeah, so after, cleansing and toner, you actually want to use an exfoliating. So antimyan, this is where um, your AHA will come in, your BHA will come in. So what AHA and BHA are uh, um, alpha hydroxy acids and what these are are chemical exfoliants. So you know how you use like your body scrub or your face scrub on your face. Again, mm -hmm. in the wokeness of the world, it has come out that the skin on your face is actually way too gentle for a lot of these scrubs that we use. And what has happened is over time, it has actually done the opposite. So you think you're making your skin smooth, but actually making your skin rough because the scrubs are too abrasive. So over time, you keep repeatedly giving yourself micro tears on your face. Mm -hmm. And I can definitely confirm this because I've seen, I've, since I was able to see it, it was not a micro tear, but I've done face scrubs on myself where I'm like two days later, I'm seeing lines that ah, I actually scarred myself. So one of the ingredients, there are um, some scrubs that you can still use, but those are more on the expensive side. And I'm talking like 40 something, 50 something pounds. But most of the scrubs that we have in our drugstore, Neutrogena, St. Ives, please, please, please just <laughs> throw them away. Um, the, the scrub, they, they use an ingredient, I think it's called the extract from the walnuts. So can imagine how abrasive that is. So what AHA and BHAs do is the same thing. So they help smoothing your skin. 
it help lift the dead cells from your skin, but it's actually a liquid solution, right? So this is, um, so they serve different concerns. So AHA, there are different ones, glycolic acid, lactic acid, mandelic acid. So what those do is that they help lift um, dead cells and they brighten your skin. Um, and those are best for people with normal to dry skin. And if you have oily skin, you want to rather go for a BHA, which is salicylic acid. So it does the same thing, but it goes into your pores. It's all soluble. So it can penetrate through the oils of your skin and get into your pores. So this, I'm oily, so this is a BHA. So it's by the same brand, Cosrx. It's called the Blackhead Power Liquid. So after I wash my face, my double cleansing, use my toner, I would use this BHA Black Power Liquid and then the snail mousine, both in my hand. I don't use any cotton pads. And that's how they both come. You just dispense into your hand and then you just press onto your skin. And what that means is that you get the best um, payoff of your ingredients, in your, or rather of your skincare products. So an alternative is this. So this is an AHA. So this is my mom's and this is a BHA. So they're the same thing. This one, you just spray it on. So this is more for normal, to dry skin and this is for oily skin. And like I said, after that you use your um, essence. And after that, I just go in with a moisturizer. So this is from um, the same brand again, Cosrx, and it's an oil-free moisturizer because I have oily skin. So I use this. Again, just press about three pumps into my skin and then I massage it to my, into my skin. And that's usually, where a lot of people stop, but sometimes at night I would seal in all that water-based moisture with that oil. So I use um, rose hip oil, cold pressed rose hip oil from the ordinary. So that's at night, and then during the day, my last step would be my sunscreen, which again is from the same brand. Cosrx is very available in the UK, and I use the three finger rule where I just apply the product three fingers and then a bit into my skin. So that's what I have um, under my makeup today. So what yeah, do you think so about that's that. And serums, what do you think about those skin serums? Like the ones that um, are extracts, rose, rose, you know, um, similar to, they're not essential oils. They're not similar to essential oils. They are like all natural ingredients or serums. I feel like, a lot of times when things, I tend to stay clear from things that claim to be all, all natural because um, there's not really a lot of account accountability on that end of skincare, unless it's proper, like, you know, FDA approved and all of that. Sometimes they're not even putting the full ingredients on the list. But what a serum is, is not supposed to be anything oil-based. So serums are more liquidy. So I have a couple which I use for certain different concerns and I use them before my, so that would be my step before my moisturizer. Um, so anything that is claiming to be all natural, mm, I mean, every, all the chemicals are all natural. They're derived from some plant or some, you know, molecules, but they can, I, sometimes I feel like they're a bit, you know, more on the gimmicky side. So I don't really, on my face, maybe on my body, I can use like shea butter, coconut oil, but on my face, no. Okay. What are your thoughts on black soap? For your face? Yes. No. So black soap, if you've noticed, can be very drying. Mm. Very, very drying. So what that is, is you're actually you're stripping your skin. So it's, it's fine for your body, maybe during like the summer, but even during winter, I find that it's, it was very drying for my skin. So you use it for your body um, during summer, during the warmer weather, but for your face, no. no. It's too drying and too stripping for your skin. Hmm. So generally our faces need to be like treated with a lot more gentleness now we do. Yeah, one, one brand that I would recommend really amazing all through is, um, let me write it down, it's called CeraVe. Let's put it in the chat. Is that and it's available. Time? They have different options. Okay. So for their cleansers, for example, they have their hydrating cleanser, 
which is more dry to normal skin. They have their foaming cleanser, which is more normal to oil, oily skin. Then they have um, an acne foaming cleanser and they have a salicylic acid cleanser. So those are the four cleansers and that's, that's a really good brand. So it's nice, um, not too stripping, very available in the UK. So you can just choose any of those four that works best for your situation. And don't forget the 60 second rule of making sure you massage the products into your skin for at least 60 seconds before you rinse off. And also the no dry rule. So don't dry your face, just while your face is still damp, not wet, go on building the rest of your skincare routine. Moisturizer. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you so much, thank you. That was wonderful. You can tell that you're obsessed and uh, you're <laughs> obsessed with the skincare, all things skincare and all things makeup. So let me, I want to get, um, let me get the... You said you were going to send up the sheets. Yes, yes, yes. Let me get that. Sorry, can I just, Katie, one more thing. Would you recommend the ordinary, um, they have a squalene cleanser, the ordinary products? Yes, I've never used it before, but I've seen... Because um, it's an oil-based really cleanser. Really yes. Good. Yes, I've seen a really good um, review from one of my skincare guys. Okay. His name is James Welsh, so you can check him out on YouTube. Yes, I've seen him recommend it as one of the nice, accessible and affordable cleansers you can use. Wonderful. Sorry? Is it James Welsh? James Welsh. Welsh, Welsh. Yeah, okay. Yes, that's correct. Thank okay, you. Okay, says only, only the Thank host you so can much. share in yeah. You're welcome. Um, so sorry, only the host can share. Let me ask. Let me. Um, okay, you can go ahead and share now. Okay. Yeah. Can you see? Yes. Thank you. Oh wow! So you can screenshot the first page, and then the second page. Screenshot that. Okay. Okay. So you can do all these 10 stages and then you apply your makeup. Yep. <laughs> it's mask. Wait. Sorry? I'm just looking at the sheet mask, eye cream. Yeah, so I do I do sheet mask sometimes. Eye cream, not really. Hmm. Well, you don't have to do the 10 steps. Just pick what the essentials are. The first two cleansers, um, toner, exfoliating, treatment, moisturizer, sun protection. I find it curious that the exfoliating is after the toner. So the, the, the exfoliating on this sheet is a rinse of exfoliators. If you look at the texture they showed, it's more like the scrub. Mm -hmm. Can you see? Mm -hmm. But if you're using a leave-on exfoliator, you would use it after your toner, before your mm -hmm. essence. So if you're using more of the liquid chemical ones. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So okay, do, um, do you teach people? people? people. Like full, proper, sorry, proper full makeup classes. Thank you so much. Yes, I do. Mm. I do teach. Where can we find proper full makeup classes? You can find me on Instagram. Um, my full name, which is Kaladata, so it's just Kaladata underscore K A L A D A T A. So you can find me on Instagram. You can send me a DM on makeup, skincare, any questions, anytime at your service. Me Nito, you should I mean, it's, check out her page. She does like really yeah. amazing 
we cope is not to you know it's very yeah it's on like getting i recommend her well natural you know glow in the um, the makeup looks that she does and she's been mm. to plenty school but it did make up <laughs> plenty schools feeling all righteousness and doing her masters and everything she said okay Daddy, here is the certificate for the masters. Let me now go my makeup in peace. But yeah, anyway, so check her out and then um, maybe attend yeah. her classes. Thank you so much for for being here for us. Um, You're thank welcome. You. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Uh, that was really thank very you. amazing.